Hey guys, 631 aka W2BTK. Uh, I want to do something a little different today, so I'm going to show you guys my antenna system. Let's go. Alright, so here we are in what I like to call the transmitter room. Behind me is my antenna tuner. It's a double balanced tuner, meaning that it's balanced in, balanced out. So I run a non-resonant antenna, meaning it's really not resonant anywhere that I wish to talk. But that's okay, because with this tuner, I can get rid of all the reactants and bring it to 50 ohms J0 with very, very low losses. What you see coming off the top here, going up into the ceiling, is actually my feed line. There's no coax connected to the antenna. The only coax comes from the transmitter it'll hit this one-to-one -one, uh, balance choke. This converts it from an unbalanced coax to a balanced feed line. These two inductors are in series with my feed line and they can be tapped at different points depending on what frequency I want to operate on. There's also a capacitor in parallel with the feed line and as you can see it's uh, inserted here at the top of these inductors, we'll call that the hot side, with these pieces of strap. Now this capacitor, uh, depending on where it is in the circuit, on the hot side or the cold side, will determine a lot of things. So if the feed point impedance is above 50 ohms, to match my 50 ohm unbalanced line, I'm going to want to put this capacitor on the hot side. Now say that I go to another frequency and the feed point impedance is much lower than 50 ohms or just below 50 ohms in general I'm gonna take this capacitor and move it in the circuit to the cold side the 50 ohm side and that will allow me to get rid of all the reactants tune it out and get on the air so right now it's tapped for where I usually talk and that's 75 meters 3885 kilohertz so as you can see I've got these and when I want to change bands I'll have to unscrew them and move them. Now it's not very convenient but this tuner was built to handle a lot of current in case I want to run legal limit especially on the 160 meter band where my antenna is way too short but it works fine with this setup however current can be up to five times what it is on the other bands when I'm using that shortened compromise antenna on a very low frequency. So. Let me give you one more shot. We'll just kind of pan up. You see up here, that's where the feed line penetrates the ceiling in my shack, goes up through the attic, out of the roof with some Teflon spacers, which I'm going to show you now. All right, let's go up there. All right, guys. Well, as you can see, we're outside now. I'm going to do a quick tower climb and uh, go up to the roof. Come on and climb with me. Ugh. As I mentioned, and I apologize for the roof being a little dirty, this is where the feed point comes out of, um, of my roof. So these are actually made out of Teflon. You need that because there can be some pretty high voltages on this feed line. I don't really think you see too much stuff like this. Not a lot of guys have the balls to drill through their roof, but this is the best way to do this. So I'm going to pan up. You can see the feed line and it goes up to my antenna. Up there you can see going this way is a center support coming from that tree over to this tree and that's at about between 35 and 40 feet so if we follow the antenna and I'm not sure how well you can see this it'll go out to that tree right there the antenna actually folds down and continues and stops about 15 feet above the earth just to give it a little more length so we'll follow it over to the other tree and there you can see my 2 meter 440 antenna on the TV tower but just behind it you'll see that tree and it's the same deal 
it hits the top of the tree and folds down and stops about 15 feet above the earth where there's a piece of string guying it to that fence over there. So it's about 130, 140 feet overall and that's perfect for 75 meters and like I said with that magic tuner downstairs I can get on 160 and have a pretty good signal. Wouldn't really be possible with something like a T-tuner so the use of this balanced feed line uh, allows me to do multi-band operation with just one antenna. This thing is good from 160, 80, 40, 20, 17, 15, 10. It gets a little bit weird. The higher you go in frequency, the pattern will get lobby. And by that, I mean, it, it's, you'll get a clover pattern or just these weird, weird lobes on the antenna, but they have a lot of gain. So, if you have one in the right direction, you'll be doing good. Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is my antenna. This is what you hear me on all the time. So, uh, thanks for watching. This is W2BTK, a.k.a. 631. Bye, guys.